when I found out I was going to Afghanistan, a lot of people were like excited. Some people were shaken up, but I was more optimistic at the fact that I could, you know, maybe die and not have to face the realities of, you know, the life that nobody knew. I have a family, I had a wife, I had my pets, and I had things, you know, to come back to, but at the same time, those didn't mean anything to me because I wasn't able to be me. With God as, you know, as a main focus of my life, I made a bet with him. I was like, hey, 50-50, you know, if I flip this coin and it lands on heads, I keep my heads. If it lands on tails, I'm going to blow it out. When I flipped that coin, I was hoping, you know, that I can just choose a way out, but it landed on heads, you know, and God, obviously, to me, wanted to keep me around. I didn't know why, and I didn't, you know, question him, but I made a promise, you know, if I'm gonna go and try to live the rest of my life, I'm gonna try to live it happy. That was like the really the most selfish thing I could have ever chose to think, but I was done pretending. I've been done for pretending for years. And yeah, it seems like a coward's way out, easy way out, but it was something that families are proud of. And you know, memorials are made after people who die in war. Memorials aren't made for trans people who die in the streets. I felt proud to be an American soldier and to be able to wear the flag on my shoulder and show that as an American, this is part of paying for our freedom and paying for our rights. The military does employ the most transgender people out of every corporation or any job in the United States. 15,000 people are transgender in the military serving right now. And that's 15,000 people that are questioning who they really are and trying to be a soldier protecting the freedom of American rights. They're patriots. They are doing stuff that only 1% of the population does. And to have that cloud over them, I feel limits them from having their full potential of being the best that they can be. Ironically enough, it was uh, my promotion that outed me. After they had saw that my enlistment paperwork said female, I talked to a sergeant major and um, sat down, looked me in the face and said, so what are you? And I remember thinking, I'm human, first and foremost, and I'm here to do my job. I took my first shot of testosterone and it was like I took my very first breath of life. That made me a better person, and it made putting on that uniform so much easier. So I began without telling anybody except my closest friend at the time. And nobody asked any questions for a year. So while wearing a uniform and at work, I was female, I was she, I was her. But outside of work, in civilian clothes, outside of the base, everybody saw me as male. And then I left my command in Hawaii and arrived on the East Coast to begin my deployment training. I arrived by myself. Nobody from my unit was with me. And everybody took me again at face value. So I went through uniform issue with the males. And then I went on to do combat training with the males. And then when I arrived in Afghanistan, I was in the barracks with the males like I had been my entire training. 
And that's the picture I sent back home to my family whenever I was over there. My mom actually got rid of all my pictures from about the time I was one to fairly recently, so 22, 23 years old. Um, it was almost like having those pictures on display or hanging up in the living room or anything like that would be like having a stranger in your house for both of us. So she decided to get rid of them and now all we have are pictures moving forward. Why would you just sit in one spot? I think this is funny. Never mind. I'd just like to go ahead and, and do my part and, and just try and do my job and live my life. I mean, look at the Army's core values, to the loyalty, honor, respect. I mean, like, these people, are me included, I was honest with my chain of command. I took the courage to, to tell them the truth and they still kicked me out for it. I mean, I'm, I go to work scared every day that today's gonna be the day they're gonna hammer down on me for right. being me, for just being me. For just existing. I obviously joined the military as a male and after a year of serving in the army, I'd begun transitioning from male to female. And by the time I left, about five and a half years later, I left as a female soldier. Definitely had a lot of anxiety that like somebody would call me out on it or somebody would just go ahead and start pushing the regulations and, and kick me out. But I remember there's, there's this one instance, it was probably the last four months that I was in active duty. I was uh, sitting in a conference room and it was me and my battle buddy were waiting for a brief and it was just the two of us. And I leaned back in the office chair and my makeup compact had actually fallen out of my cargo pocket. And he just like looked at me, looked at the compact, and I was trying to think of some excuse as quickly as possible. Like I was holding on to it for another female soldier. I was starting to say something like that. And all he did was reach down, picked it up and handed it to me. And he's like, dude, everybody knows, nobody cares. And he was still the same soldier that I've always hung out with that I've always worked with and, and it doesn't bother me any. Being openly transgender in the military is found as um, a behavioral health disorder or a mental disorder and they can kick you out administratively or through a med board for being transgender. It's definitely hard to go from one extreme to the other. When I have an amazing weekend with my friends and then wake up Monday morning and put on my uniform and know that I can't tell anybody at work how amazing my weekend was, what I did, it's, it makes you feel separated from everyone around you. Like, this is me, this is me excited, this is me living. It doesn't feel like anything, it feels like normality. It feels like I'm just expressing who I am, what I am, you know? It's like, God made me this way and I'm gonna fully express it and I'm gonna fully love it and hold on to it and be able to do what I'm going to do to be me. And no one can take that from me. I mean, they can try as hard as they want, but this is who I am, and this is who I always will be. Is Grandma there? I don't care who's computer is. Grandma there? Hi, Grandma. I, I saw it. I, I have to put up the phone. Okay. Grandma doesn't like me still. I said grandma doesn't like me still.
I'm going to get going. Um, I'll talk to you guys later, okay? Bye. Love you too. She isn't just busy. I mean, every time she's just busy or is this like, I talk to her for a second and then she just walks away. She's been there like my whole life. And now it's just like this part of my journey when like she can help me and everything is just not there. I talked to a Sergeant Major and he made me produce government paperwork that said I was male, and then he sent me back to work. And then only 15, 20 minutes later, I was pulled back again and told to pack my bags and I would be out on the next rotator. I had to be escorted back to my room because all of a sudden I was a female in male space, so I had to be supervised to pack my bags, and I had to bring everything to the loading docks and wait. And I was surrounded by these people who were going home after a deployment that had lasted them a year and they were continually talking about the things they were looking forward to, the things that they couldn't wait to see again, their families, their brothers, their sisters, their kids, have a certain meal. And all I wanted to do was go back to work. I always knew that it was really just kind of bound to happen, and that eventually it was only a matter of time that the wrong person would figure me out and kick me out for it. Even though I was sworn in, as a, a female into the Ohio National Guard, the uh, battalion XO definitely made sure that he had used the regulations in order to kick me out for being transgender. So within a year of being sworn in and completely accepted, I was rejected and kicked out. And even now that I'm a defense contractor, I make three times my salary as an active duty soldier. I'd Definitely trade it in a heartbeat just to just to wear the uniform again and be a soldier like I was before. Nobody knew about my secret and nobody knew about the situation I was in. And it was actually easier to be in Afghanistan than it is to be in the States. There was only one thing I really had to do was go out and do missions and that reality. There's no future, there's no past, there's only that moment. And so being transgender didn't really matter as being a soldier mattered.